Well, joining us via Skype now from Madison is Dr. Kevin Barrett. He's with the Muslim Jewish Christian Alliance. Mr. Barrett, we are hearing a lot about uh, how this nuclear deal can be successful. Uh, the Iranian foreign minister, the, ch the chief nuclear negotiator, just uh, told uh, the media, as we saw in that uh, piece of news, that the way for this uh, deal to be successful is for the United States not to give in to pressure from lobby groups uh, from Israel and the U.S. Congress. Uh, do you agree with that? That's absolutely correct. The Israelis are very angry about this deal, and they are going to go all out to sabotage it. There was just a story in today's New York Times uh, quoting top Israeli officials as saying that they have six months now uh, to sabotage this agreement, and they're going to be doing everything they can to do so. Um, some of us are concerned that they might even take extreme measures, as they occasionally have in the past. Uh, false flag terror attacks and such are always uh, a possibility when the Zionists feel that their uh, interests are, are seriously threatened. Uh, they'll certainly be doing everything they can to sabotage these talks in Congress. They do largely own the United States Congress. Uh, they are well, you know, they're able to throw people out of Congress anytime they want. Um, so Congress probably will be causing all sorts of trouble for this deal. And the problem is that that will give the impression that Iran is not being respected if the U.S. administration and the international community uh, go allow the U.S. Congress to uh, do this kind of Zionist sabotage. So I hope that the wiser forces in the U.S. leadership and the international community will find a way to circumvent the Zionist sabotage and to continue to be uh, minimally respectful in their dealings with Iran in order to see this deal through. From day one of these negotiations, uh, led by Mr. Zarif, that it wants a win-win uh, solution. Uh, and now we're seeing Iran says, uh, and the United States saying that they are both satisfied with the solution that, or the deal that's been made. Iran going to stop its 20 percent uh, enrichment, uh, allow further inspections, and the U.S., on the other hand, uh, easing some of the sanctions. Why, then, is Israel calling this a historic mistake? Well, you know, Israel is not really concerned about uh, Iranian nuclear weapons. Israel's concern is they need a diversion from the real issues in the Middle East. And if they can have the world uh, focusing on Iran's nuclear program and pretending that there's some kind of a crisis where there isn't one, then the world will not be paying attention to the plight of the Palestinian people and, of course, to Iran's extremely threatening and reckless nuclear, or rather, I'm sorry, Israel's threatening and reckless nuclear program. Uh, so Israel is really running a kind of a, a propaganda operation, a diversionary operation in which they are uh, trying to put the world um, on the trail of everyone except for themselves. And if the Iran crisis fades away, as it looks like it will, then the pressure will be on Israel to reach a deal with the Palestinians and the world's uh, nuclear nonproliferation community might even uh, start paying attention to what's going on at the Israeli nuclear facilities in Dimona, where there are reputedly more than 400 thermonuclear weapons, plus uh, an unknown number of miniature nuclear weapons. Uh, the Israeli nuclear program is the most dangerous program on Earth. And if the Israelis fail to keep forcing the world's attention on Iran, that uh, the world's attention may suddenly focus on Israel and the weapons inspectors might even start poking around in Demona. Dr. Kevin Barrett with the Muslim Jewish Christian Alliance with us there live from Madison. Thank you very much, sir, for your thoughts.